Good morning. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Good to see everybody this morning. The fifth Sunday of Pentecost. And uh, I feel pretty good about the epistle lesson this morning because uh, the older I get, it seems like the more I catch myself talking to myself. In fact, I find myself having conversations with myself at times. And, and in our epistle this morning, we see Paul kind of having a conversation with himself. He's grown so frustrated at fighting sin in his life that he just gives up. And you hear that conversation, that, that uh, dilemma going on within himself as, as he shares that with us. And so today we'll talk about that. But the last few weeks have been some of the hard sayings of Jesus where he calls out Christians and says, here's what I demand. Now this week we get the other side of Jesus where he calls us to himself. So it's a good, good set of uh, readings for this morning. In our announcements for this morning, uh, uh, Vacation Bible School will be going online this summer uh, due to the, the Rona, as my kids call it. And so please keep watching the website and to see any updates and to see how everything will happen. And speaking of the website, our, we are wanting to upgrade the website. And so we're looking for some tech help if you would be interested. Uh, read that in the bulletin. Uh, in our prayers this morning, we this week we pray for Peace Lutheran Church in Robbinsdale, uh, Pastor Steve and Vicar Martin, uh, and also we continue to pray for Liz and Sue as they heal, for Ann Knudsen, and for Larry Schmiles and his family. Uh, happy birthdays this week to Nate, uh, Nathan, Avaya, Donna, Joe, and Joseph, and Bradley. And anniversaries this week are Doug and Sherry Vikenen and Scott and Ronell uh, Amundsen. Let's see, we're also still looking for some green thumbs. If you'd like to help around the, the church with the flowers and everything, please let us know. And I think that's it for the announcements. So we will begin with our first hymn.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout out, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your King is coming to you. Righteous and happy salvation is he. Brothers and sisters in Christ, by ourselves we are not righteous and cannot free ourselves. Our only hope is to be given Christ's righteousness and thereby to be saved. Let us therefore confess our sins to God, our Heavenly Father. Merciful God, I confess to you and in the presence of my brothers and sisters that I daily sin much and deserve nothing but punishment. Not only am I by nature sinful and unclean, but also with St. Paul, I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. Wretched person that I am, who will deliver me from this body and death? Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He offers full and free pardon for all your sins, and even your sinful condition. By his death and resurrection, he provides rest, not only from physical turmoil and emotional stress. In him we find rest for the soul. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our entry for this morning is from Psalm 91. And we will speak, though, speak it as printed in the bulletin. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, My refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. The Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague no come near your tent. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. And at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I quit, declare that I will restore to your double. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from the seventh chapter of Romans. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have a desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not do want, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being. But I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but with my flesh I serve the law of sin. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. <laughs> Except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn.
a while back. This thing seems to go out. It's the only thing that's gone out in 235,000 miles, but it likes to go out all the time. And I was trying to get it out, and I just couldn't quite get my fingers to do it. And uh, I really wanted to throw that thing across the room. I was getting so frustrated. So I took it to a friend of mine that's a mechanic, and he had this thing in and out in probably three minutes. One of those things that really makes you frustrated and you just give up. Everyone has something like that every now and then when what they're trying to do uh, burdens and wearies them. Can be working on a car. Maybe it's math for some people, I don't know. Others it is mechanical. Sometimes for you it may be trying to understand people. You know that feeling though. Know? You try to do something, you want to do something, but you just can't get it to work, can't get it done. And no matter how hard you try, you can't succeed. The more you try, the more frustrated you get. You want to accomplish whatever it is all by yourself, but you find you don't have what's necessary or it's just not working that day or something to get the job done. So your inability to complete the job becomes a burden and a huge frustration. And uh, eventually you just give up trying. You know, brothers and sisters, that doesn't just happen when we deal with people or try to fix things. The way many people falsely understand salvation leads to the same type of frustration and despair. Salvation by works of the law, trying to be saved by what you do is like trying to accomplish something that you can never attain. The law tells you what you're to do, but it doesn't enable you to do it, to comply with its commands. Instead, it causes you to become more unwilling to keep the law. Sometimes even causes you to sin more because you're so frustrated. Trying to live up to the law only ends in despair. The law does not save. It brings knowledge of our sin. Trying to attain salvation through the law only makes you weary and heavy laden with guilt. Paul speaks of the same type of struggle in today's epistle. Here's how he said it. Here's how he worded it. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil that I don't want to do, this I keep on doing. Paul finally just throws his hands up as if in total frustration. And he says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Now, if we look truthfully at ourselves, our life, just like Paul's, is a constant struggle against sin. You don't do the good things that you want to do. You're a sinner. You're a wretched sinner, just like Paul, <coughs> deserving eternal death in hell. And this is what we mean when we confess in confession time, when we say, I'm a poor, miserable sinner, or we say, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy. We're calling out to God and admitting we're wretched sinners. Most of the time, though, we try to hide this wretchedness. Maybe not from other people, but we try to hide it from ourselves. We try to push those thoughts out of our mind. We don't want to deal with them because of the frustration. So, you come up with wise and learned schemes trying to justify yourself. And instead of calling the actions that we do sin, we call them mistakes or learning opportunities or we say, ah, oh, my bad, and we act like it was nothing. While we might try to hide the fact that we are a sinner deserving damnation, the burden of that guilt still remains. The last few weeks of Pentecost, Jesus has been letting us know that he has raised the standard quite high for his followers. Sins are sins and not mistakes. Sins lead to eternal damnation. You see, the stakes for our eternal souls are very high. But in this morning's gospel, 
Jesus reveals where we must go to fulfill God's standards. He says it in verse 25 through 27, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, this was for your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. You see, brothers and sisters, the Father's will is seen only through his Son, Jesus. All things, including your sins, have been handed over to the Son by the Father. He was sent to reveal his Father's gracious will to us. Jesus entered Jerusalem the last time, humble and riding on a beast of burden, so that he could take the burden and the weariness of our sins from us and give us rest. He took your sins to the cross, and on that cross he died for those sins, removing them. And believers in Christ like you and me find true rest for our souls in him who has taken the burden of our sins from our shoulders and placed them on himself. So instead of trying to hide our sins by acting like they're just mistakes or it doesn't really matter, Jesus calls on us not to get better. He calls on us to become like little children, admitting our sinfulness like Paul so that we can receive his good and gracious gifts of forgiveness. After Martin Luther's death, our Lutheran forefathers wrote on how important it is that believers seek that rest that only Christ can give. In the formula of Concord, they wrote this, Christ calls all sinners to himself and promises them rest. He is eager and he seriously wills that all people should come to him and allow themselves to be helped. He offers them himself in his word and wants them to hear it and not to plug their ears or neglect and despise the word. Furthermore, he promises the power and working of the Holy Spirit and divine assistance for, persever for perseverance and eternal salvation so that we may remain steadfast in the faith and gain eternal salvation. Brothers and sisters, Jesus calls and promises all who labor and are heavy laden and worry, wearied by sin to come to him for rest. Come to me, he says, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Isn't that so different than the last few gospel lessons? When we come to Christ, when we humble ourselves, Jesus humbles himself and comes to us. Christ calls you to himself and he promises you rest. He promises you forgiveness and the comfort that it brings. His word and his call enable you to come by your own reason and strength you cannot believe in Jesus Christ, your Lord, or come to him. But today, the Holy Spirit calls you by the gospel, enlightens you with his gifts, sanctifies and keeps you in the one true faith. The Holy Spirit does for you the very same as he did for the Apostle Paul and the whole Christian church on earth. He keeps you with Jesus Christ in that one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and he richly forgives all your sins and the sins of all who believe in him. So no matter what sins you struggle with in life, Jesus is calling you to hand them over to him this morning. Give them to him. You remember the prodigal son after he ran off and did everything he wanted to do and he finally realized what he was doing? He came back to his father. He didn't say, but dad, I've made a few mistakes. I'm young and I'm stupid. I'll learn from it. No, he fell to the ground and he said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. As we call our sins 
exactly what they are, just like the prodigal son, as we call them sin. The Father, in his great grace and love, will embrace us and celebrate our return to him. Not next week, not maybe at Judgment Day, but immediately when we confess our sins, for he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us. So I guess the moral of the story, the sooner that you and I embrace our sinfulness, the sooner you and I become candidates and graduates of God's grace. Brothers and sisters, don't run from God when you sin. Run to him, for it is only in Jesus that we will truly find rest for our souls. And this rest is yours in Christ, for he has called you to himself. He has chosen you as his own, and he has promised you his rest. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. It is now time for the morning prayers. Please rise as we go to prayer. Let us now pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the gifts of divine peace and of pardon, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Church throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel, and the calling of all to faith, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, have mercy. For this nation, that God's gracious word have free course, and that his righteousness prevails, and also that as we celebrate 244 years as a nation, that peace and brotherhood would prevail. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all people, that we pre be preserved from discord and strife, that God grant us protection in every time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widow and orphan, for the sick and dying, and for those who care for them. Lord, this morning we lift up to you Anne and Liz and Sue and also the family of Larry Schmaus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Finally, for these and for all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.